Hi, this is Lisa Shiro. I am a mental health expert as well as a breakthrough coach. And I want to address this notion of what is a halo effect? What is a horn effect? And why do we even need to know this stuff, Lisa? So the halo effect, let's just start there. So in psychological terms, the halo effect really is when we we attribute positive characteristics to somebody because they remind us of a characteristic that was previously experienced with with a with a good experience. For example, examples always help with this stuff, right? So the halo effect might happen when let's say that there was a lady who was really really nice to us 10 years ago in a library and she was so kind that she didn't make us feel judged and she had a little pin of a cherub a little like a little lapel pin of a cherub on her pink sweater and this lady will never forget her she was so amazingly helpful she was kind she cared about us when we were maybe in a despairing moment, an embarrassed moment, maybe we had just gone through some kind of trauma, we're feeling kind of low, kind of vulnerable, but yet this lady stepped in. So 10 years ago, pink sweater, and had a cute little like a cherub pin on her sweater. And then all these years go by, right? So that was a positive experience a decade ago, and all these years go by, and lo and behold, here you are in Winco in the checkout line. Uh, Winco is a store here locally in Idaho, and it's a really large grocery store chain, employee owned. Nevertheless, you go through this checkout line, and guess what? Your cashier has on a pink sweater, and she's got a cherub pin, but yet she's, she's not being really all that nice to people in line. But your mind tells you, because it likes what's familiar, your mind says, oh, you know what, she's probably just having a bad day. Because your mind has associated, at a very vulnerable time in your life, that halo effect, all those years ago. So you might discount this person's treatment of customers, no matter how negative, you might actually find excuses that maybe she's just having a, a rough day, or um, maybe uh, she's she's really, really nice all the time except for right now, because <laughs> she's got that pink sweater and that cherub pin. Are you catching what I'm throwing? I mean, this is powerful. This can cause us to do what is kind of dangerous, which is putting people on a pedestal when they really don't deserve it. And so this particular cashier in this grocery store is being put on a pedestal by you, because she's got the pink sweater and the and the little a little cherub pin, even though her treatment of the customers is despicable. So this is an important thing to think about. And why is it important? Well, if you're in a relationship where they did something really nice for you in the very beginning, and they were giving you flowers, taking you on dates, chocolates. I mean, they were just romancing you like crazy, female or male. Everything was perfect. And then they begin to treat you in an abusive manner, emotionally toxic, physically abusive, sexually abusive, psychologically abusive, withdrawing a lot. Um, but nevertheless, it's abusive. We tend to, when we hold somebody on a pedestal, we think, oh yeah, but he gave me really good smelling flowers when we were dating. Or, oh yeah, but you know, she used to be nice, and I'm just gonna wait for her to be nice again. And even in the depths of abuse, this, this can happen. So this halo effect is a really important concept to understand when you're in a relationship that is supremely frustrating. Conversely, there's something called a horn effect. Of course, it's called the horn effect, H-O-R-N. It's the opposite of the halo effect. And it's, it's exactly the opposite of what I've been talking about in terms of attributes. So that pink uh, sweater with a cherub pin on it that that nice librarian wore 10 years ago, let's say that uh, instead, 
She treated you despicably, horribly, condescended you, embarrassed you. In other words, it was just a really negative experience. All these years go by and there you see it again and you avoid this person. It's got a pink sweater and a cherub pin and you avoid, avoid, avoid. And guys, it doesn't have to be like just something somebody wears. It can be a hairstyle. It can be a scowl on the face that reminds you of uh, maybe uh, something, somebody in the past. It can be anything that you would attribute negative characteristics to. And so in this case, the horn effect can also work against us, right? We can be so focused on that characteristic, in this case we're using that cherub pin as an example, that we can't get beyond it to see the value in the relationship or the value um, in that exchange of information because we just can't get beyond it. Remember our brain likes what's familiar. So in those types of cases, what you can do is instead focus on a different attribute of this person and begin to talk about it. For example, let's say it's the lady with the pink sweater and the cherub pin and this is the horn effect where 10 years ago you were horribly embarrassed, shamed, humiliated by this librarian with a pink sweater and a cherub pin. Now you see them and you avoid, avoid, avoid and they're trying to have a you know discourse, a conversation with you and you just can't see beyond that. Would you like talk about perhaps maybe um, something else they, or maybe it's a purse they have on. Oh, that's the most beautiful coach purse. I love that purse. That must be a wonderful purse. You know, is the inside lining, is it light colored? Can you see what's inside? I mean, you really get into the purse. This kind of fools your brain and just start focusing on a different attribute of this person to kind of fight against that little nagging voice that's saying, be careful, be cautious. So there you've got a couple of psychological terms. These are powerful because your brain likes what's familiar. So let's just go back and review real quickly. So the halo effect, the way it can work against us is we can put somebody on a pedestal in spite of how abusive they are being to us. And conversely, the horn effect is when we automatically feel negative or avoid or we don't want to be in any kind of relationship or conversation with this person because they remind us of something negative. And, and that can work against us because maybe they're the next thing, next best thing to slice bread and they can offer so much value to our, our life, but we're letting our, like our subliminal messages dictate who we select because of that. And so one of the things we talked about was just look for a different characteristic they have and focus on that. Talk back to that inner critic. Hope that's helpful. Thanks so much for spending time with me today. I'm Lisa Shiro, over and out.